derive equation about the mass balance for particular species like species I, right? And then we add them together to get overall mass balance. These two equations would give you um, equation of continuity and we can use it to do solve the problem to get concentration profile just like what we did earlier for momentum and for energy. Okay? And I have not give you any example yet because I think you can do it by yourself. Okay? So for today, I will step forward and try to bring everything together. So for today, all kind of mass trans I mean all kind of transport phenomena will be combined. That means mass, momentum and energy combined. Of course, when you, when you do something like this, it is more convenient to use equation rather than shear balance because shear balance may not be convenient, may not, you may miss something using shear balance. All right, so our intention for today, we like to revise all the equation. If you recall, our we start with equation of motion from chapter three. During that time, we assume that the system is single component and isothermal. When we talk about chapter nine or chapter 10, we derive equation of energy. During that time, we still assume that there is only one single component in the system, even though the system is no longer isothermal, okay? Last week, we derived equation of continuity under the assumption that the system can contain, of course, the system contains more than one species. However, during that time, we have not talked about non-isothermal yet. So let's look at this equation. What would happen to equation of um, motion if we have more than one species in the system? or what would happen to the equation of continuity if we have more than one species in your system, okay? These are equations that we derived earlier. Equation of uh, continuity, um, equation of motion, and equation of energy. If you look at these equations, you should see that they are consisting of three terms. Term on the left, is just accumulation of the entity that you are concerned. Like if you're concerned about mass, this is accumulation of mass in the system, particularly mass of species I, okay? If you're concerned about momentum, this is a change in momentum in the system with respect to time. And then this is energy that is residing in the system. If you differentiate with time, that would give you change in energy with respect to time within your system, okay? The first term on the right-hand side, what are they? It's del dot something. That is called net flux, or net transport of the flux into the system, okay? If you're concerned about mass, this is net mass flux, net momentum flux, and net energy flux, <coughs> right? And normally, there's negative sign up front because equation of balance, usually we have in minus out equal to accumulation, but the net flux here, the, the flux itself is negative, so we put negative in there, okay? The last term on the right is generation rate. Rate of generation of species that come from reaction, generation of momentum come from external force, and then generation of energy. This come from work, all right? So we have three terms. Normally, these three terms are in similar form. If you're concerned about flux, this is flux in minus out, 
all right? And the combined flux that we use, the combined mass flux, combined momentum flux, and combined energy flux, are consisting of two kinds, molecular flux and convective flux. And I'm sure that you are all aware about that. Regarding molecular flux, molecular mass flux is diffusion, diffusion flux. This is molecular flux of momentum transport and then molecular flux of energy transport, which you can call it conduction, right? Each of these molecular flux can be calculated or can be written in terms of driving force. Driving force is a gradient of what you can measure. In terms of mass, you can measure concentration. So this is gradient of concentration. In terms of momentum, you can measure velocity. So it is a function of gradient of velocity. And for energy, it is function of gradient of temperature. Okay? All of these three equations were obtained based on experimental observation. Right? Every equation here was obtained from setting the some simple system and then see which factors affect the flux and then try to correlate it into an equation. Again, all of this has nothing to do with theory. It's just experimental observation. Particularly for this one, for mass, it is applicable only for binary system. Right? Now, the point is, this equation, equation uh, Newton law, Newton law was derived when we consider a system with pure species. What would happen if I have more than one species in the system? Can Newton law be applied? Do you think Newton law is still applicable for the system containing more than one species? Under some certain assumption, you can use Newton law as long as the viscosity is still constant, right? As long as the presence of additional species in the system does not change um, viscosity much with respect to position, then you can still use Newton law, okay? Normally, the normal mixture that we concern in our application does not change viscosity much. So we will say that, okay, the Newton law is still applicable for the system containing more than one species. How about the mass? Can mass equation or fixed law ap can be applied for the system that may not be isothermal? Does mass transport be affected by energy? Normally, you say that driving force for mass transport is a difference in concentration and temperature change does not change the concentration much. So we will, see, we will say that, okay, this one can still be used as long as you know that diffusivity is function of temperature, okay? The problem in this case comes from this equation. Why? Because this equation describes conduction. Normally, when we talk about conduction, we consider a system in which the media inside is stationary. So fluid here does not move. If you have high temperature and low temperature side, the conduction takes place from high temperature toward low temperature. If you consider one dimension, the temperature profile is supposed to be linear, right? This is linear temperature profile, like that, okay? So conduction takes place, simply transfer of energy by means of transfer of vibration from molecule, from one molecule to another. Just imagine you have a series of molecules, and then each molecule vibrate at different frequency, or different extent, according to their own energy. And one molecule can induce the, another molecule side by side to get higher frequency in, in the vibration 
It means it, it, it looks like energy is transferred from one side to the other. All right? Now, what about if I have species A here and A here? If the system is single component, everything is described according to Fourier law. If I change here from A to B, is there any difference in temperature profile? Now, what happened is when, it, when you have high concentration of A on the left hand side and low concentration of A on the right, then there will be diffusion of A from the left to the right. This is induced by diffusion. Okay? This is diffusion flux of A moving from high concentration side to low concentration. Remember, within this system, there is no force flow, no momentum flux yet. So we just consider where the fluid in, in here supposed to stay undisturbed. I'm not saying that it stays it's stationary. I, I just say that it is undisturbed. We did not apply any force to force them to flow. Okay? But the difference in concentration by itself induced the movement of molecules. So there'll be a net flux of A from the left to the right, and there'll be net flux of B from the right to the left. Okay? If the flux of A and B are not canceled out, so there will be a net flux in one particular direction. But normally, if you consider diffusion only, flux of A and flux of B should cancel out because summation of diffusion flux is always equal to zero. All right? Now, let me ask you this. If you have two compounds, like water and oil, if you supply equal amount of energy to these two compounds, do you think that these two compounds would end up with the same temperature? No. Why? Because normally different compounds should have different heat capacity. What does it mean, heat capacity? Physically, heat capacity means ability to hold amount of energy to the molecule, right? The molecule with high heat capacity usually contains more energy to itself. Suppose I have A which has high CP, high heat capacity, and B here has low heat capacity. So what is happening here? Molecule with high heat capacity move from the left to the right. That means it moves from high energy part to lower energy. By the movement of molecule itself, it brings energy. Because right now, molecules of A move from left to right. By itself, it carries some certain amount of energy according to its own heat capacity. So as long as the heat capacity of A and B are not equal, then there will be net energy flux occur according to the movement of molecule, right? 